We're going to buy American. We're going to buy American. Folks, so trade rules. Buy America has been the law since 1933. Also caps, and won't go into effect until 2025. And by the way, that law was written and the benefit expires in 2025. New electric grids that are able to weather major storms and not prevent those fire, forest fires. Now my predecessor, a former Republican president, tells Putin, quote, do whatever the hell you want. That's a quote. My predecessor came to office determined to see Roe v. Wade overturned. My predecessor and my predecessor, a president, my predecessor, my predecessor, including my pre predecessor. While Biden spent most of last night's State of the Union acting like Trump was Voldemort, he who must not be named, my next guest, who's also running for president, has a different vision for America. A growing number of Americans are rejecting divisiveness. They're ready to unite, to rebuild this country, and to fulfill the promise of the America of my youth. They're ready to vote for something. That's the State of the Union that I want to bring you today, to rebuild, to end the forever foreign wars, to clean out the corrupt Washington establishment, and to turn again toward peace, freedom, good health, and prosperity. Joining me now is Robert F. Kennedy, Jr., 2024 independent presidential candidate. Um, Robert, your reaction to Biden last night, especially going hard on Ukraine at the top and going all in on Putin's rolling through, you know, Europe like Hitler, and I'm paraphrasing, obviously. Yeah, uh, I mean, I thought the speech in general, I agree with some of the commentators that you've had, that it was hyperpartisan, that it was more like a, that, you know, President Biden, when he came in, promised to unify the country that this was more of a campaign stump speech that you'd give to a kind of a red meat crowd during the last two weeks of the campaign rather than the kind of uh, statesmanlike and presidential uh, unifying speech that we want to see and that the nation expects and that the world expects from the, from the State of the Union address where you want to see um, you want something that in, in, inspires pride in our country and in our country and, and all around the globe. The speech is listened to, you know, to billions of people around the world. And we want to showcase the best of our country and not just make it a, you know, a, a sort of a partisan slugfest. In terms of Ukraine, I, you know, I disagree with the kind of comic book characterizations that uh, that President Biden has made. This is a war that should have been settled that we now know because the, uh, we now know from the Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett, from uh, from the Turkish Prime Minister Premier um, Ahmed um, uh, Erdogan that uh, that peace agreement was initialed by both sides, by Zelensky and by Putin's right. side, that Putin was withdrawing troops from Kiev when President Biden sent Boris Johnson over there to force Zelensky to tear up this agreement. Uh, this was not about stopping uh, Putin from rampaging across Europe. It is a war about the extension of NATO into Ukraine, which we should not be doing. Our, our greatest diplomats have condemned that. It was just, it, it was a mistake. President Biden did mention one issue that he has not mentioned before that I was very happy about which is the housing crisis in this country. The fact that young people can't get into a home. Um, his solution, however, I think was, was uh, I would say, a, a, a cynical solution, which is a $10,000 gift over the next two years. In other words, from now to the election. Right. Well, the problem, Robert, people, not to interrupt, but the problem is inflation. I mean, we, of course, the rents, rents of have been high for no, some time, but they skyrocketed when he, he could have just opened the economy in, in January 2020, uh, uh, 2021, and it w we would have been off to the races. But instead, he borrowed trillions of dollars more, printed a lot more money. That helped drive inflation and drove up the cost of everything. So it's easy for him to say now, oh, inflation's high. We got to do things. But his policies are the, one, uh, are the primary driver right now of the cost of rent and every other thing that people buy. And he didn't really yeah, want to touch I any of that. 
No, I, I would agree with you. We've now got a $34 trillion debt, and over the last 100 days, we've added a trillion dollars to that, and that is unsustainable. We're now paying more for the service on that debt than we are for our military budget, and if interest rates grow up, we could, we, within 10 years, we will be paying ba basically every dollar collected in, on, on taxes could conceivably go, be going to service the debt. And, you know, there's nobody who is, yeah. who is taking this problem seriously. The big issue, and you're right about inflation contributing to the pri housing, price of a housing stock, Laura, the housing stock is going up faster than anybody else. And it's a systemic problem. And a lot of it has to do with these big Democratic donors, BlackRock, State Street, Vanguard, Blackstone, Fidelity Group, which have now, which own 88% of the S&P 500 and are now targeting single family homes. Oh, yeah. There is legislation on Capitol Hill to stop those investment houses from purchasing single family homes. We need to do that. That is a systemic fix rather than the short term right. fix that's going to drive up, you know, drive this inflationary spiral and drive us further into debt. Robert, it's always great to see you. We're not going to play any sound bites about people who say you don't have any chance because you're scaring everybody out there. <laughs> we really appreciate your voice tonight. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.